It is day eight. Or is it day nine? I think it's day nine. I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> I had, well, a break in camp. It's cold. I'm drying out my clothes by wearing them. I wore my uh, long johns last night, my base layer. It stormed a bit, so the uh, river has risen. That's the Beaver River. This is one of the Beaver River campsites. That guy came back. He's a cool guy. Um, I'm going to try to make it to Penn Creek campsite. And hopefully I will make it. And I'm wearing thicker socks and I'm hoping it makes my feet not swell up as much. So maybe some extra padding. Maybe it's just socks that I need. Hopefully. <laughs> starts picking up. It's magical, man. It's magical out here. Look at all this. Look. It's magic forest. The smell out here is amazing. Oh, there we go again. Another craving for ice cream. It's a 
flock of eagles that keep flying above me. Yep, that one's not gonna be fun. I've been on worse. Just everything is soaked, so I have extra water weight. <laughs> around where we just were to the top of this point here and I probably even went from the top of that highest ridge over there too I have no idea it's awesome when you get to see your progress also we're really high above the tree canopy seriously guys I need to get a different pair of shoes. I don't like these ones anymore. Trekking poles are holding up great though. They're keeping me up on my feet. I would also like to point out that if I slip, like I have been slipping in the wrong spot up here, I'm dead. Guys, we made it to normal ground. I wonder how long it's gonna last. That was horrible having to rely solely on the trekking poles to get off of that ridge. These boots suck. That also means that my $30 trekking poles are beating my $300 boots. We're going back up again. You know, I would say that the SHT is better left to section hiking because the path of least resistance here would be through that stuff over there. But instead it brings you up every single piece, every single ridge because it's not meant for getting from point A to point B. It's meant to look at the overviews or the uh, overlooks that you can see only accessible by foot kind of thing, you know? It's a tourist trail. <laughs> it's not a travel trail like, you know, back in the old days. Also, there's a cloud rolling in. I can feel it on my skin. I think that's 10, which means I'm still not really that close to camp yet. I'm in the rain, I've got my poncho on inside out because the outside was drier than the inside. <sighs> it's a good poncho though, when it's normally not wet on the inside, there's a good like waft with the wind and everything. So you, when you're moving around, you do stay kind of cool and it goes over your pack, keeping everything dry. Works way better than a pack cover. Guys, it's been a steady uphill like this for a long time. Oh my God, I'm exhausted. Finally made it to camp. Made it to Penn Creek Camp. Uh, there's actually a little waterfall in a tiny little gorge out here too. It's pretty cool. I didn't bother to look at it today. I'm going to look at it uh, tomorrow. When it's hopefully not raining, I learned two awesome things. One is that my poncho, even though I had to wear it out inside out, works fantastic. I just wish I had enough time to put it on yesterday before I got all wet. And I hiked in these big Carhartt sand or Carhartt socks. I think they're a wool cotton blend or they might be wool synthetic. I'm not sure. I just have them Basically, in the winter, I would use those socks because whenever you move your feet and it touches a new part of the sleeping bag, it'll get cold. That's for like cold, cold camping. 
but I keep them in there just in case. And I hiked in them today. My feet just need a lot of extra padding. And that's why they're getting swollen. Hey, you learn something new every day, don't you? So, I get to resupply tomorrow. I'll be eating at uh, Northwoods Grill, or whatever it's called, and resupplying at Zup's Grocery. I've already been in the area. I already know what I'm expecting. And guys, I have been trying to eat all the extra food that I brought. Because basically what happened is I added a couple extra days of food, which, you know, that's not a bad idea. I'm completely fine with a couple extra days worth of food, because what if something happens and you're a day or two behind, you know, it makes sense. But I panicked at, the, like, the last minute and threw a couple extra things in there, and that was just way too much food to keep in there, so... <laughs> Not gonna do that again. I already know what I'm getting from the grocery store. It's gonna be amazing. I am getting some heavier stuff, but I'm gonna basically pack it back up the hill so I can just chow down on it that night and then chow down it on the on it the next night and then I'll be at my normal, you know, pasta sides and whatnot so forth. But I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna try to do a lot more dry foods this time because cooking is just a pain. And Eating trail mix is just like the easiest thing in the world. Just have, I might get a little extra baggies to keep them in, but you know, just put them in the side pocket. You can eat trail mix as you go, and you're getting the protein and calories and carbs and everything. It's good. The other thing I want to consider is jelly beans. If I can find jelly beans, I'm totally doing jelly beans because those candy pebbles I got from uh, Gooseberry, they were just so awesome. I'm totally considering jelly beans. In case you're wondering what I was wearing on my head earlier, it's a buff. And it's one of the most versatile pieces of headgear you can have. I was wearing it as a beanie earlier, and my head was starting to get cold, so I uh, switched it to this thing and then turned it into a balaclava, man. Yeah. Why can't it just stop raining? Oh gee, look, more rain.